We're going to talk now about making a career decision, which is very, very important. And in fact, one of the foundations of this course, the reason for the success plans, we want you to choose a career that fits for you. And that fit really depends on quite a few factors. The education. Is it a one year, two year, 12 year? And is that okay with you? Does that fit? Your natural abilities. Do you um, like to work with your hands? Are you someone who enjoys working with machinery, technology, your personality traits? Are you an individual who is a people person and, and you want to work directly with the patients, the activities you enjoy, that should be part of this choice as well. A career should bring you joy. Okay, Not every, you won't get joy every single day, but you want to choose a career that involves activities you enjoy and the work environment is important. Now, most careers have options or possibilities for a number of different work environments, but sometimes there's one major. Most of these professionals work in hospitals. Most of these professionals work in blood banks, et cetera, et cetera. These types of questions are part of the success plan for unit one when you do a few assessments and look at the results for those. When you choose a career, there's also consideration of what rung on the career ladder you are most interested in. So um, the different levels of the occupation require different amounts of education or training. For instance, you can see here most aides require on-the-job training or vocational training, a technician or assistant, typically an associate's degree a technologist or therapist, three to four years of college. I will have to say many therapists go beyond to their master's degree, two more year, two more years, and professional, four years or more of college, and usually much more. You need to, again, consider the levels of education on this career ladder, but I think it's more than that. As you might imagine, there's more responsibility um, and also you higher pay compensation as you move up this ladder. But I will tell you, it doesn't mean that the highest rung is the best fit for everyone. I've met students who have the goal of becoming a nursing assistant or an LPN. They don't want the responsibilities of the um, professions at the higher levels. Now, when you look at healthcare professions and you are choosing a healthcare profession, it's also to understand the different standards, also important to understand. So there is certification, which is a general term, and it means you've met predetermined standards standards which require education and a professional exam. Okay, you have to complete the education and then you can take the professional exam. And that would be a, something like a certified medical assistant, a certified nursing assistant, a certified occupational therapy assistant. Registration is a little bit different. It involves placement on a list, an official list, after meeting predetermined standards. So still, you have to meet some standards in order to become registered, such as a registered nurse, respiratory therapist, medical assistant, and I will say I am a licensed and registered dietitian. Licensure is different still. Okay, these are granted by the government, um, typically, almost always the state, and it gives you formal permission to perform certain tasks within your scope of practice. So licensure is required by many, but not all professions. So going back to my profession, I am both a registered and licensed dietitian slash nutritionist. So here are some examples of licensure. A dentist, a licensed practical nurse, dental hygienist. To work as a massage therapist, Kelly must obtain approval from her state, so that is called what? It's licensure. 
That's the approval from your state. As we dig into this career choice, one of the ways of organizing careers are in career categories. And it does help you match what you are strong in or interested in to a number of careers. So one is therapeutic and treatment. Another is diagnostic. Third, health information management. And fourth, environmental occupations. So let's look at some of these, although this doesn't cover all of the, the um, careers. So therapeutic and treatment occupations do just that. Okay, They work with patients to get them better. And you can see a number of these careers right here. Okay. A nephrologist specializes in treatment of the brain and nervous system, true or false? It is false. Nephrologist is kidneys, neurologist is brain and nervous system. Diagnostic occupations, they're the detectives. They're the individuals that are looking to see either how you're progressing or what might be causing the problem. So examples of these careers are diagnostic imaging and medical laboratory. And then health information management, they work with all of the information that the healthcare system spews out, okay, and data, information. These include the health information technician, medical transcriptionist, coding specialists. Environmental occupations um, include the people that keep the facility and its equipment, equipment running. So you see nutrition, dietary service, biomedical engineering. Which of the following might be the best choice for someone who wants to help patients regain their mobility after surgery? It is a physical therapist. Which of the following occupational therapy occupation requires the most education? It is the occupational therapist. So as you um, look at career choices and what's out there and what may fit. There are a number of different resources and they're listed here. We have um, the uh, tool that we will be using for this, this course and you'll see that in the success plans as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about problem solving and applying it to academic planning. So when you are planning your academic pathway, you're actually running through the problem solving process. You are gathering information about careers, choosing a career, but then you have to determine the pathway to that career. So it's important that you understand the application process. Most of our health career programs are select programs that require um, you to meet some standards before you can apply to the program and then there's an application process as well. So you can't just start taking nursing courses. You actually have to take and um, get a C or better in certain prerequisites, have a certain GPA, and then you can apply. And then only the top students are accepted. So it's quite a process. You can look through these slides more slowly, again, by stopping the video. But here are the basic standards for applying to the different healthcare programs. And we have a few certificates as well that have some standards. Now the application period for our select programs begins each October and it is an online process, but you can go to the web page linked here and then to the specific career and then um, you can find the application process as part of the information. 
Now keep in mind that reevaluation should be part of the process as well. There are a lot of individuals that come into this course and think that, well, I know I want to be a nurse, but then as they learn more, they realize maybe that's not the best fit for me. So be open to that possibility. And if you decide along the way that maybe healthcare isn't the best career for you, it's important to discuss that with a counselor and that's not the end of the world. In fact, this course, Age 101, can be substituted for the first year experience course in liberal studies or business if you earn a C or better. So you're not wasting your time here as well. We have loads and loads of support services. They are linked on your homepage for this course, um, but you can find them in the catalog. We strive to make sure our students can succeed. So be sure to let me know if you have any needs for supports. Um, keep me in the loop as well. Okay, that's 1B. On to the response.